power? Coal. Upon these two, the fate of industrial Britain depends. Our economy faces its most vital period since the Industrial Revolution. The year's most momentous commons debate and the government's recently published economic survey have crystallized the issues at stake. Questioned on the government viewpoint, Stafford Cripps puts it this way. We shall only get it right if we can produce much more than we did before the war. That's the only way we can get the things we need. Food, clothes, entertainment, a little less struggle to live, a decent home and warmth. We want colour in our lives, a better education for the kids, bigger pensions for the old people and all the rest. No doubt we are in a bit of a tough spot and it'll take a year or two to get out. But we've done it before and we can do it again. The central problem is coal and power, says the white paper. Here in Sheffield, coal alone supports Britain's greatest steel center. Light industry here at Wolverhampton lives by coal. In Blackburn, all textile and engineering works depend upon coal. The great cities of Britain are virtually built upon coal. For the lack of coal, the great power producing plants have failed us. Gas supplies have been and are still gravely restricted. In the same field, for the same reason, every industry and every household face renewed cuts in electricity. Coal and power. Without them, we shall lack the bricks, the steel, the furnishings which our ambitious housing program needs. If the looms of Lancashire are idle, we shall never escape from austerity and rationed clothing. Heavy and light, all industry will stand or fall by what we do now. We and all industry stand ultimately upon the shoulders of Britain's 695,000 coal miners. They claim a five-day week will solve the production problem. Union President Will Lawther tells you why. An organized and planned five-day week means more production. Give the miner proper leisure and he'll produce more coal, not less. This is the miner's view. But many leaders of the country's major private industries have other opinions, among them the shipbuilders of Clydebank. One view came from Camel Lairds. Speaking in Liverpool, Chairman Sir Robert Johnson said the five-day week might mean eventual ruin. A third opinion is advanced by the great motor and light engineering combines. They have sought a middle course, whereby shorter hours may still mean greater production. Spokesman for industry is Nuffield Vice Chairman Miles Thomas. Five day week is all very well, and I believe the British industry in general can support it. But there must be sufficient hours in it, at least 44. And there must be sufficient effort expended during those 44 hours to ensure a full week's output of work. Without that, no one can expect a full week's wage. Next to coal, manpower. There are over 20 million workers in this country, says the white paper. They produce goods and service valued at well over 8,500 million pounds a year. This is the value of the total amount of work done by the nation. The choice lies between a rising production and a falling standard of living. Every man and woman plays a part in this decision. In all their many jobs, they are Britain. Public services, manual workers, cleaners, caterers, street sellers, government workers, distributive trades, women workers, miners, transport drivers, steel men. For seven years, we, the people of Britain, fought a war for mankind. Today, we fight for our own survival. This battle also, we shall win. <laughs>